Boker Tov from Yerushalayim. I'm here on Har Habayit and this is a special Shabbat coming up. Shabbat Rosh Chodesh. So this is when the typical Shabbat landing on Saturday coincides with the monthly Rosh Chodesh. And if you are familiar with the Shabbats, we read from the parasha. And the usual Haftarah, the prophets or the Ketuvim, the writings that we read from corresponding, are switched when Rosh Chodesh lands on a Shabbat. And we instead replace it with Isaiah 66. Why Isaiah 66? What's this passage got to deal with? Isaiah 66, as you know, the last chapter in the amazing saga of Isaiah is sort of an interruption. Isaiah 65, in context, is talking about the beautification of Jerusalem, of Jerusalem that's going to happen when the days of Messiah, Mashiach, come. And then it takes a sort of pause and it interrupts, Isaiah interrupts himself and says, By the way, when we're here on Har Habayit at the temple, we need to take special consideration because he says, So says the Lord, Hashem, the heavens are my throne and the earth is my footstool. So which is the house that you would build for me and the place where my Shekhinah, my presence would rest? In other words, if you want to rebuild the temple, you got to do it for the right motives. And believe it or not, the motives that you should do it for are not for me, says God. Don't do it for me. Do it for you. But before we get to the UN context, why is Hashem, the Lord, saying, look, if you want to build the Beit HaMikdash, you want to build the temple, do it for you. Because if we see in the context, there are people who are, instead of coming to Har Habayit, there's no temple at the time when Isaiah is prophesying. It needs to be rebuilt. And the people are saying, look, we don't want to rebuild the temple. We have these nice little groves that we go to. We get to offer whatever we want to offer. We can offer pig's flesh or mice or any abomination. We can do whatever we want there. There's no rules. There's no regulations. Whatever. We just throw everything off. You know, but we'll go and uh, we'll still offer to Hashem anyway. And he says, that's, that's not the point. Don't do it for me, says Hashem. If you're thinking, okay, well, we'll just throw a little sacrifice to Hashem and then continue to worship wherever we want, on every street corner or in every other place, that's not what we're doing this for. We're doing it for you. We're doing it to have a coherent society. The society that follows one path, a society that follows one way of righteousness, not a, a time of the judges where everyone's doing whatever they want to do, everyone's doing right in their own eyes. Do the Beit HaMikdash simply because it's a centralization and it brings the people together. That is the most important part. Not too long ago, I went on a men's retreat, believe it or not, those still exist, with a bunch of other guys here in Israel. And they're religious, not religious, and it was in the Negev, the desert of Israel. And one night, we're sitting around the campfire, there's the beautiful stars above us, and one of the more religious guys, who doesn't spend too much time around non-religious people, he looks up and he says, you know, I now know that there is Achdut above Halakha. And what does that mean? It means that there's unity above following the strict letter of the law. This was his understanding of the point of having this men's retreat is he took away from this, look, these guys that are, they're maybe not following the same religious traditions as me. They're just like me though. And a matter of fact, we get strength from each other simply by being around each other, even though we might differ on exactly how to follow the intricacies of the law. That's what the Lord is talking about. Don't build the Beit HaMikdash so that you can try to figure out or what are the intricacies of the halakha that we need to follow and the laws and try to keep people out. And Because that's what happened with the second Beit HaMikdash. Even though Isaiah is written before that destruction, he foresees what's happening here. Why was the second Beit HaMikdash destroyed? It's because of Sinat Chinam, baseless hatred. People were just basically saying, you know what? This group's too political, I'm out of here. This group's too irreligious, I'm out of here. This group's too religious, I'm out of here. And everyone just abandoned the temple and did what they want to do. You had the people at Qumran going and going to the desert. You had the people in the north going to the, their mountains. You had the extreme political rivalries of the Kohanim, the priests happening. And then ultimately, the Romans came, took advantage of everything and destroyed because we did not have unity. Were there some people that were probably right? Probably. Yeah, there were probably some people that had it right. Doesn't matter though. The point is when Isaiah is prophesying, don't do this for me. Don't think, well, we have to do everything perfect because this is the Lord and he's going to dwell in this temple and it has to be absolutely perfect. Shem says, no, you couldn't do, there's nothing you could do that could measure up to my standards because I dwell in heaven and my footstool is the earth. So do it for you. And he goes on and he says, who are those that are going to be brought back and brought to Har Habayit, brought to the temple? He says, it's only those people who are dedicated and faithful and do everything perfectly and they have to be Jewish by descent and have to have perfect lineage. Actually, that's the exact opposite of what it says. He says, everyone 
who calls upon the name of the Lord. Jew, Gentile, no matter what you are, no matter how religious you are, not religious you are, Har Habayit is the place for you, no matter what. And we just walked up here. It's the summer months, so there are a lot of kids going on what's called Tiulim, tours. The Jewish kids, they go around different places, and the Arab kids do the same thing. And there's tons of Arab kids here. Do I feel animosity at all of those Arab kids up here? No. Again, because this is a place for all peoples. What I only want is that the Jewish kids would not just tour around Israel and stop at the Western Wall and then go home, but that they would just take a few extra steps and come up here as well. And everyone else who has been traveling here, I've met and done videos of a lot of non-Jewish people that are coming up here. They love Har Habayit. They're donating to it. That's the real spirit that Hashem is after in Isaiah 66. And from all of these people, He's going to make new priests, new Levi'im, just as there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth and a new Beit HaMikdash. Everything's going to be made new. We're going to use the models of old, right? The Kohanim, the priests, the Levi'im, the people serving in the temple. But ultimately, there's going to be a new population. It's not going to be like in the second Beit HaMikdash where there's barriers to keep certain people out if you don't have a certain lineage or a certain pedigree. Those will disappear. Ultimately, what Hashem wants is the spirit. No more of this trying to gatekeep everybody out. The future is that on new moon to new moon, Sabbath to Sabbath, all flesh, and that's what it says, kol basar in Hebrew, all flesh will come and bow down before me in the place of my holy name. Isaiah 66, 23. With God's help, Be'ezrat Hashem, this will happen and it starts with coming up here today it starts with seeing you up here and if you want to reach out leave a comment below like and subscribe for more videos i look forward to seeing you up here this is the temple manifested